Well, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the career of Rocky Long, the three-time Mountain West Conference Coach of the Year and the winningest coach in Mountain West Conference history. Rocky became the 18th head coach at San Diego State in January of 2011 and promptly led the Aztecs to a bowl game that first season. He would do that in each of his nine seasons that he was head coach while amassing 81 wins and consistently coaching a defense that ranked near the top of the country in total defense. Rocky's teams produced great moments and great players throughout his nine years as head coach. Three conference championships, beating Stanford in 2017 in the blackout game, 4-1 and one record versus the Pac-12 over the past four years, a consensus All-American and first round draft pick in Rashad Penny, along with 18 total draft picks since 2011. Uh, DJ Pumphrey, the all-time leading rusher in NCAA history, the only team in NCAA history to have two consecutive 2,000-yard rushers that were different players, multiple Mountain West Conference Players of the Year, including sweeping those awards in the 2015 and 2016 seasons. This past year's team finished with 10 wins, the fourth time in the past five seasons that we've done that, and was arguably the best defensive unit that Rocky's had in his career at SDSU, finishing sixth in the country in total defense. I'm fortunate to have had the opportunity to start my first career at SDSU the same year Rocky became head coach. I've watched as he has developed a culture within football that now permeates the entire athletic department, a culture of toughness, grit, and hard work, a mentality that given the opportunity, we can and we will defeat any opponent, whether a blue blood or someone down the street. That willingness for hard work has carried over into the classroom where Rocky's teams have consistently performed well and young men have graduated to careers into the NFL as engineers, teachers, police officers, and so many other success stories. Rocky always embraced being a part of the Aztec Athletic Department. It wasn't uncommon to see football coaches at other teams' sporting events on campus, and he kept up with what all of our teams were doing competitively. He was available to all of our coaches to provide advice or to just bounce ideas off. As a, and as a first-time AD, it was great to have Rocky as my football coach. He has certainly been someone I've been able to lean on at times as I learned the ropes. I enjoyed our discussions, many of which revolved around Aztec football and Aztec athletics, but also whatever might be happening in the world today. And while all of the accolades I've discussed are amazing, his best coaching job was how Rocky met his wife, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> while coaching the Pi Beta Phi sorority team in the spring of 1971 at the University of New Mexico. He guided the sorority to consecutive undefeated championships and Rocky's def defense was not scored upon in any game. Debbie knew she had a winner. <laughs> Rocky and Debbie have two daughters, Roxanne and Hannah, who were both student athletes and followed their dad in careers in coaching. I'm excited, that Rocky's, I'm excited that Rocky might get to spend a little more time with his family in Durango, watching Hannah coach Queens College Volleyball, or attending Debbie's cutting horse competitions, which she's at a cutting horse competition right now. I hear she's looking for a good stable boy, Rocky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rocky Long. <laughs> That, that's plenty, that's plenty, that's plenty. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, obviously, uh, I've decided to retire uh, from coaching at this point. Uh, and I wanna thank everybody in this, uh, at this university and this community that has allowed us to be successful. Everybody knows that nobody does it alone and the people in the athletic department as well as the university do everything to support our athletes in order for our athletes to be successful. Uh, the culture at this school and in this athletic department is something special and uh, being able to be part of that for the last 11 years for all those th things that uh, that seems like a long time. I've been a head coach for 20 years. Uh, it's time, it's time. I love coaching, but I don't necessarily love all the things that head coaches do. So, so it, it, it is, is time for me to leave, and with the excitement here on campus, with the 
new campus being uh, developed here soon and the new stadium being developed here soon with great leadership from a young, exciting president and great leadership from our young, exciting AD. Uh, it's time for, uh, and I hate to say this, a new face, even though it's not a pretty face, a new face. <laughs> And uh, a new voice does not mean the message is going to be different. It's just going to be presented in a different way so that hopefully there will be excitement around the program so that the, the support is there for building this new stadium and building the new campus. I, I think it's a, a really, really exciting time. And as you grow older, you know when it's time. For me, it's time. And I want you all to know that the very best thing about this program is our young men in the program. Uh, you don't win all those games unless you got quality kids. And, and I, don't, I don't mean athletes. You have to have athletes to win. Obviously, you have to have athletes to win. Uh, so they have to be good enough athletes to win. But more important than that, they're good people. And I said kids. Well, some of them are kids and some of them are men. And the men that leave our program are special people and are going to be uh, very successful in life and, and make everybody at San Diego State very proud of them. They're the best part of our program. And they're, there's a bunch of them coming back that are the same kind of people. Plus, they're pretty good. They can play. So the possibilities of continuing our success is really, really good. So, so it's time. Uh, and uh, I have to say something about Brady. Because once they get it away from me, they're not going to ever let me talk again. <laughs> That's what happens when head coaches resign or retire. They don't let you talk anymore. So uh, when Brady was nice enough to bring me here, that was probably the luckiest day of my life as far as coaching goes. Uh, because I was looking for a job, he gave me one. And it worked out, it worked out well. Obviously, it worked out well for him, and it worked out well for me, too. And when, I, when Brady uh, decided to come back, I told everybody he was the best defensive line coach I've ever been around. And that part is true. Uh, if you saw the improvement of our defensive line, it was amazing. But what else he is is a good guy. And he is a great head football coach. So there's nobody that could do it better. So thank everybody for being here, and thanks for the, the memories. I'll always be an Aztec at heart. Well, now, uh, now an exciting part for me is to introduce the 17th and now the 19th head coach in Aztec <laughs> football history, uh, or maybe he's just always going to be the 17th. So, um, Brady Hoke. Brady's no stranger to the Mesa, as he is part of the fabric that established the success we have achieved in Aztec football the last 10 years. Brady's a two-time National Coach of the Year and has over 35 years of coaching experience. In his previous stint as head coach at San Diego State, his teams went 13-12 and 12 after inheriting a 2-10 and 10 squad and ended an 11-year bowl drought in 2010 by leading the Aztecs to a Poinsettia Bowl victory over Navy. As I began the search for our next coach, I knew continuity in the core values and culture of our program were a priority. The foundation built by Rocky and his staff the last nine years, the major factors for our success. The opportunity to get to know Brady over the last year and for him to have a season coaching in the program were key factors leading me to the decision today. Brady believes in the same values that I do. We are here for the total student athlete experience, winning on the field, winning in the classroom, and ensuring that when young men leave our program, they do so with a degree and the opportunity to be successful in life. Continuity is why this football program and overall department had such a successful decade, and I'm excited to formally introduce the new leader of Aztec football as we move into a new decade, Brady Hoke. Uh, thank you. Uh, number one, I, I want to thank Coach Long. Uh, it was uh, fun for me this year. It was fun 10 years ago when Rocky was calling the defense, and uh, I want to thank him for giving me the opportunity to come back. And it was uh, 
uh, probably one of the funnest years I've had in coaching. So uh, I appreciate that. And our friendship goes back to Oregon State, goes back a long way, and that will continue. I'm still trying to uh, uh, recruit him. And uh, I don't know if I, I can do that, but hell, I'm going to try. So, but uh, it's, uh, it's great to be back. Um, I got a lot of people that I, I want to thank. Uh, number one, JD and Bobby uh, for their due diligence and, and everything. Uh, uh, President Delatore uh, for uh, her commitment and uh, her faith. And uh, obviously, uh, my wife, Laura, and daughter, Kelly, who are both in North Carolina, because this kind of happened fast. So, so it was one of those deals. But uh, more so, and Coach Long hit on it, uh, the former players the guys that uh, have defined this program and the guys that are in the program now. Uh, this, this is a great community. Uh, obviously, the uh, uh, hallmarks of San Diego State football are, are, is toughness and the effort that we're going to play with, that we're going to go to class with, and how we're going to uh, treat each other within our building and, and on campus. And I think that is important, and that's something that Coach Long has done a great job when you look at the accountability, the commitment, the respect, and trust that we all have within this football program. Um, we always want to strive for our best potential, whatever that is. Whatever uh, is laid out there, our best potential of what we're going to try and do. Uh, we're going to have pride in the ownership of San Diego State football. We talk about the past, present, and the future warriors who have played in this program or are going to play in this program. And that will always be uh, key for us in how we move forward. Um, it's a great opportunity. I can't, I can't tell you, you never get to do something twice that you really want to do in life. And I was very fortunate, uh, Coach Long bringing me back and being back here on San Diego, at San Diego State. And uh, I can assure you, we, we are going to uh, keep going in the direction that we are going. And we always want to be better every day. And that's what we're going to try and do. So thank you very much. Rocky, what was the timeline when you actually decided to do this and the report out of Syracuse or Washington State or USC, is there much validity to them talking to you about bringing your stuff there? Number, number one, I went to JD uh, before the bowl game and told him I was thinking about retiring uh, and asked him if I could get through the bowl game and Christmas vacation before I made a decision. After Christmas vacation, I came back and met with JD and told him that I think I wanted to retire. And he said, are you sure? And I said, yeah, it's, it's time. It's the right time, it's the best time for everybody involved, for this program, for me, everybody else. And so I happened to mention that to a couple of my friends in the coaching business that I was retiring and all of a sudden I got some phone calls. And so, uh, I'm smart enough to listen. <laughs> so, so I listened in, in a couple of those places I went and visited with. Simple as that. Thank you. Coach, is there any thought that you might end up at one of those places now that you've had that open ear and talked to them? Well, as of this moment, I'm retired. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to listen to anything they have to say. Uh, you, I mentioned it before, I'm, I'm tired of being the head coach, but I love coaching. Yeah. And the, mo the most fun is, the most fun I ever had coaching is when I was coaching the DBs and coaching the second, uh, secondary and coaching the defense for Brady Hoke. Because Brady was the head coach and all he made me do was coach and recruit. That's all I had <laughs> to do. And that's the most fun I've ever had in coaching. Well, if someone gives me that opportunity again, I might, I might take it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. JD, you talked about your coaching search. Um, how long did that take? Did it kind of start and end with Brady Hoke, or was there a larger process going on kind of behind the scenes recently? Uh, you know, as Rocky mentioned, we had a conversation uh, back in December, a long conversation, as he talked about, you know, his thoughts of maybe wanting to re retire but wanting to get through the bowl game and all that. And, you know, we talked about all the different things that we could do uh, from an athletic department standpoint to, you know, help him want to stay, uh, whatever that might be. Uh, he came back from break and uh, last, I think it was a week ago, Monday, uh, told me that he was ready to retire. So. Since that time, uh, we have worked, uh, one, a lot of conversations with Rocky about how we want to see the continuity in this program and how important it is uh, to continue what we've already built. I had no desire in any way, shape, or form to blow up what we have. So we talked about that. We talked about the who. Um, we spent uh, probably, I think I got on the road Thursday, back Sunday, uh, had conversations with multiple folks, and at the end of the day, Brady Hoke, uh, having been, you know, part one of the architects of what we have today. I mean, he and Rocky did this for the first two years and kind of got some things established. Uh, Rocky took it to new heights, and then having Brady back in the program for a year, got to see a lot of what we had done. Uh, and we spent um, two hours on the phone and then six hours sitting across the table from each other, myself along with Bobby Smitherin as well, uh, who is the sport liaison for our football program. And, you know, at the end of the day, felt like Brady Hoke is the person that's going to be able to continue what we're doing and, you know, build on this program and take us to, you know, further heights. Rocky, you on your right, sorry. Was there, and, and I think JD addressed it a little bit, but was there anything they could have said or any specific things they could have promised or done that, that would have convinced you to stay maybe another year or two? No, in fact, uh, at my age, it's, it's nice to be flattered. They tried really, really hard to change my mind. But uh, also, after you become a veteran, you know, you know when it's time to go. And I love this place, and I love the players at this place. Uh, but it's time for someone else to add the excitement to what's going on with the campus and with the stadium. It's time for a new voice, and I, I'm perfectly fine with that. And uh, they tried, they tried, but I'm kind of hard, for you media guys, you know this, <laughs> I'm kind of hard-headed. When I have something that I think's right, you can't change my mind. No, we've never felt that way at all, Rocky, not at all. <laughs> uh, you know, I think you're probably in better shape than 99.9% .9 of the people gathered in this room here. So, it, you know, you saying you're retired, is it maybe just a, a hiatus, a stepping away, a recharging the batteries, and then, you know, come May or June, you start getting that itch, and it's like, oh, my God, i got to continue coaching? I mean, right now, how does it feel? What, is, what do the next couple of months feel to you? Uh, a couple months is too long to think about. I'm thinking about tomorrow. Uh, now, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings here, but you notice that I didn't wear a coat and tie. <laughs> yeah. There, there, are certain, there, there are certain advantages to being retired, I'll promise you that. I uh, think not a to coat and tie is a good idea. <laughs> uh, you know, that I, I, I'm going to coat. I'll, I'll probably help somebody coach, even if it's up the street at the high school next to my house. I mean, I, I'm not going to stay away from the football field. And there's some high school coaches that would love to have an old man coach their freshman team. <laughs> and, and I love coaching so much, I, that doesn't bother me a bit. I just want to be out there with the boys. Brady, where are you on putting your staff together? And is it in place? Well, we'll uh, meet tomorrow and uh, talk about uh, where we're at and what direction we want to go. You know, I was taught a long time ago that, you know, a leader has to choose their team. So uh, to some degree, obviously, I want to look at that. Uh, I think the guys here and the guys I was privileged to work with are good men. And I'm uh, excited about those meetings tomorrow. This is for both coaches right here. This uh, program has really, really taken off with both of you gentlemen. But is there a sense of frustration not being in a Power Five conference, did that have anything to do with d you deciding to retire? You won double digits, uh, 
several seasons. Uh, Coach Hoke, you go to a Big Ten school. Does, does that play, does that frustrate you at all that, that you all can't get, you've gone to the, to the mountain, but you haven't gotten to the mountaintop? It's always frustrating if you, if you don't win every game. Uh, Brady and I have been friends a long time. We have very similar philosophies. We're out there to win every game. We have no control over what league we're in. And half of them won't schedule us. Uh, any of them that will schedule us, they're in for a fight. And the more of them that schedule us, the more fight they're going to get. I mean, uh, J.D. said their record against the Pac-12, that half of them won't even play us anymore. Uh, is that frustrating? Yeah, if they're scared, that's frustrating. Okay, but uh, we're in the league we're in, and we have no say-so over that, so we try to win every single game, whoever's on the schedule. Coach O? Well, obviously, same philosophy. I mean, we, we, we don't care who we're playing. Uh, they know they're going to get a, a, a day gone dog fight uh, with who we are and who we represent. And just like Rocky said, people don't want to play San Diego State. I mean, they don't want to. And, but if, if, if they do, then we're going to play with our toughness and our effort uh, like no one does out there on the football field. Brady, you kind of touched on it, but just curious what comes to mind when you think about your time here previously, the road you've traveled since, and what it's like to kind of have this thing come full circle. Uh, it, it's uh, unbelievable. Uh, feel really, really fortunate to be able to come back. Uh, believe me, if it, uh, we love San Diego, San Diego State. Uh, Laura, my wife, loves it here, uh, and she loves the Aztecs. And if it wasn't for the friendship and the professionalism that I've had with Coach Long, with Rocky over the years, uh, maybe we wouldn't have come back. But with him and Debbie and number one, his leadership, and also just uh, as a friend, someone that you, uh, you know you're going to fight for. Uh, Coach Long, was there an epiphany that you had uh, where the moment came where you're like, it's time to, to step aside? Epiphany. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe uh, tell me what that means. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, there wasn't, one, there wasn't one thing that happened or one moment that happened that made me decide. I mean, uh, uh, there, for the last two years, that's been a thought in my mind, but uh, everybody in this room uh, knows what we're all about. Brady and I are about the same thing. You know what we're all about. Seven and six isn't good enough. So you never quit when it's not good enough. Double digit wins, four and five years, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like the right time now. And I appreciate he made this a lot harder also. <laughs> and a follow up for Coach Hoke. Um, how have you grown and changed and matured since the last time that you had this job? Uh, what's going to be different this time around that you uh, maybe matured as a coach in your philosophy? Well, I, I think philosophically uh, that hasn't changed much as far as uh, how we want to represent our names, who we are, uh, how, how we want a team that's going to play with great toughness and great effort and mentally tough guys who are going to add to our uh, um, our program and our athletic department and our university that are first class guys and guys that are going to have great integrity and great character. Um, I think, you know, you always, you always grow. If not, then uh, you have, you know, you, you won't get to where you want to go. So I think that's been part of it. I think uh, different experiences shape you in different ways. And so I, I'm down to the core, there's a lot that's who I am. And I think that's important in how we uh, uh, um, do things. But uh, other than that, I think there's little things you take from recruiting to, you know, the style of offense has changed and all that. And we'll talk about that at another time. But I mean, those things are all part of it. Do you feel like this is a second chance for your career? Uh, I don't know about that. You know, I, I'm proud of my career, believe me. Um, but it, it, uh, 
a second chance of coming back to a place that we really loved for 18 months and the type of kids that we have on this football team. So that, that's where the second chance comes from. Topic of, on the topic of second chances and getting back here to be again, uh, I know some Aztec fans want you to be asked this question. I know coaches hate hypotheticals, <laughs> but if your dream job comes along two years from now, will you take it? No, no, this is where we want to be, believe me. We are, I made a commitment to JD, uh, to the president, and to my wife. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> Not that she holds more than JD, but. <laughs> she does. Yes. We all know that. <laughs>